It's game time. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of World End Economica. My name is Futz and let's start the final day of trading. Being some trading began, I mumbled that to myself while Hagan and I was silently. My last day of the investment contest, there were red letters across the trading screen saying just that. The time until 5pm was counted down, stirring things up to our participants. The number of participants dwindled even more than it did yesterday, it seemed. Looking down the entire marketplace, stock prices largely didn't change, and still the trade volume of stocks was completely different from before. Buying and selling was something that would happen when a buyer and seller appeared. Like a fish plugging from a largely dried up lake, trying to find water and swim in. But I saw something different being projected. I've seen it in a film once, a scene where fish are swimming across the oceans of the earth. Net is raged. A large cast of squirming fish are caught. Big haul. People from Earth. We had a long history, but I managed to craft out a wonderful phrase. How? Well, I know, I know. I looked at the cluster of stuff stocks, but maybe it was all easy when I'm looking at the stock we decided on. But I had complete faith in the data I had calculated. The greatest majority of the margin buying ended up prevailing with local craft. Even without looking at the price fluctuations, I know. Filled without much self confidence, there was serenity in my mind at that moment. Just need 90 million more, right? We have 270 mores right now. The total amount of capital we can put up here is 780. This is a small amount, but it isn't perfect either. If we started right off the bat, we'd be done for. Investing was it like a game of rock, paper, scissors, except if you cheat and show your hand after everyone else. If you didn't know who put out the order, the screen constantly displayed the number of orders completed the trades. If one watched the same stock patiently, it can very transparent which participants were involved and how much capital they threw in. When aiming for a fraction of a percent, you could really almost picture a face of your opponent, a psychological warfare ramped up. Right now, officials are going back and forth. Especially on the last day of the contest, where there were people who couldn't reach the top ranks no matter how hard they tried. Where these people were most likely to act irrationally in desperation. I had to wait until they were tired themselves out. People like that were mostly playing this like a game. When gaming, if one were to play after losing motivation, interest would wane quickly. One thing which should be of concern are ones who are thinking they could profit by taking positions opposite to ours. If I just dashed off and threw in too much money, a stock act, for example, a thousand malls would just pop up to 1200. If happened, the sellers would close in. Certainly, a lot of them would sell at 1200 malls, I suppose. Ones holding on to stock would sell at a high price. There's one on their face. A margin sellers would rise to 1200 mall selling price on the position list. If it fell, number four would lead to profits for them. On the other hand, we were to hold on to stocks border at a price of 12 under each. I have no choice but to take a stand and drain our funds. Really, the only thing I could do right now is pray like Lisa. We're certain to lose. To win, we had to make the opposite happen. So we waited patiently. We were in the marketplace. Those running out of time alongside those who'd lost interest probably left, leading to a continuation, continuing decrease in trading. The waters that traders needed to swim in were very rapidly drying up in the marketplace. In technical terms, normally it would seem like liquidity had dried up. Whereas in other to trade with, the smallest of orders, to cause the prices to fluctuate wildly for down. If prices went up, the sellers would surge for, from a price went down, the buyers would surge for. I waited. As the red letters denoted the time left at the end of the day, the tears changed as time elapsed. I did nothing and waited. Black Chocolate Corporate was a company that had a low trade volume. It wasn't a gathering spot for one playing in the ground, but also wasn't totally ignored either. It was probably because of a large amount of margin buying involved with it. Was it from those who were still trading, or perhaps those who had already left the marketplace? Without knowing that, we could have followed its trend. There was a feeling that any possible movement would be large. Given the atmosphere, it should have brought in more interest, yet it really wasn't well traded. I always made sure to close all positions 10 minutes before the markets closed. In the marketplace, the last 10 minutes were where the demons lurked. Right now, I instead decided to become the demon. 760 million mores of capital at my disposal was a large sum of money, even for the imaginary car marketplace. Even for the guy behind me in third place. Disruptions and chaos in the marketplace caused him to lose 110 million mores of capital, leaving him with less than 300 million in leverage funds. On top of that, Losing myself into trash, numbers and positions changed furiously with a great blur. At times, there'll be someone putting upwards in ranking like a fish surging forth in a blast of brilliance to rise only 
very briefly before dropping the thing further. For someone to look at my rankings, it would not be too strange for someone to get rid of misconception that I was done through trading. They didn't make any moves. Partly also to feed those misconceptions. When morning trading finished, I ate the food Lisa prepared, and then I waited quietly. Not once did her guard open her mouth to say anything. An hour later, the market opened. I went into the observe. A share of black drops at crop. Crop prices went up in value by nine more versus the previous day. Now trading at 812. The total trade volume this morning was slightly over 42,000. In other words, no more than about 32 million more in capital moved. Even looking at the market trading balance, for the most part, there was no movement. About time to stir things up. I'm watching myself as I enter the market order for 3,000 shares. With this in case of a trading board, I've been monitoring up until that point. I can feel rumbling and disturbance coming. With the sound of a giant whale swimming, keen minded individuals probably felt it. After hesitating on my order, there was an agreement. The share price became 813. Then, as if acting in concert, someone also sold 3,000 shares. 812. Official gathering, for the most part, moves were finger types. Time slowly became 2 o'clock. A little less than 3 hours to go. It spanned about 5 minutes, I made market orders for 2,000 shares, and then 3,000 shares. Drawing by that sound, the trade volume started slowly to rise. Sellers and buyers were gathered. It looked like the sellers were prevailing slightly as the price became 810. There were tens. Mark acted like an obstruction. The sellers slowly started eating away at the barrier. Soon, at 3 o'clock, the trade screen was announced with the concept sponsors. Two hours remained. Everyone was trying to do something in all of the remaining time, but it was not obvious enough. That alone was, was enough to cause commotion. As the trade volume went up with another tick, I made my move. The guard looked like she wanted to say something because I became aware she was looking at me. But I ignored her and continued to stare at the screen. 317. The commotion for the announcement died down and everyone took a moment to take a deep breath. The one stroke made a market share order for. 100,000 shares, roughly 80 million moles, 10% of the amount I could trade with. Naturally, for a buy order such as that, there wouldn't be enough sell orders to accommodate it. And to each sell order, one coming after another, the price suddenly raced upward. 11, 12, 13, 15, 18. The price kept moving and from time to time we would march with someone's sell order. Owing to a quirk of trading system, perhaps the upward string would only stop for an instant. It was certainly enough to wake up anyone who was asleep at the wheel. It started. And after a complacent smile, up until then, 100 shares, 200, most 3,400, 4,000 were transacted before things suddenly went up for another order of magnitude. Water, there's water here. The fish came sleeping in place to swim. The spot where we gathered became a water for another fish, as more and more were drawn towards it. 20,000 shares sold, 10,000 shares bought, 5,000 shares bought, 7,000 shares sold. Seller's advantage. We looked at the margin trading balance, it was pretty naturally. The price went up, the margin buyers would come selling things off in a hurry. Before that happened, one would sell, hoping to sell and run a high. Twice. The people thinking that were way numerous, once scrambling to sell would continue to increase. 13, 11, 10, 10, 10, 9. Before I heard the sound of Hagana curling her hands into fists, or maybe I was imagining things. The tens barriers were broken. 8, 7, 6. The price continued to fall. The push of momentum brought back along all the traders who caught wind of it. Systematically, they also came together. 4, 2, 0. At the 100s mark, the buy orders increased by 200,000. The raging assault pounded that mark relentlessly. If that wall fell, the price would continue to fall. The buyers would ride us out, and selling would become more difficult. The buyers support that level fervently. The offense and defense continued as I pressed the key. But everyone fighting wooden poles felt like I was calling up a shot from a tank. A buy order of 200,000 shares by a single person was made. The battle was reversed. How? I got a mumble of my name. But it seemed to, didn't seem to get my attention. Apparently the excess of mental stress was what caused her to mumble pointlessly. I made a sidelong glance and saw Hagana staring intently at the terminal, not bobbing to look up at all. That's night. I tell this trading was for Hagana's sake. At that time, Hagana really was in a panic. But I was like, Hagana was waiting in, in, in anticipation. She was awkward to expect every outcome. The awkwardness was because, up until this point in Hagana's life, I was sure she knew all along too, all too well that hope had no meaning. 
long time ago, it wouldn't be out of the question to think that she might have given up on hoping for anything. For Zaboon to have been able to utilise the Garner's mathematical prowess for real-world problems, and her Garner responded to that. Hope was most definitely not meaningless. If something could be done, and do it until it can be done. It was definitely not a meaningless thing. Her face held up hope, in an almost tra tragically awkward way, saying that hoping wasn't meaningless. Margin buying has increased. Looks like it was as you had described it. The share price returned to 814. It didn't go any higher because we increased any more, and sellers would come knocking, knowing that buyers also lay in wait for a price to go down before buying. Among traders, it must be those who made orders without fully understanding why. Without with those, I watch the margin buys closely. More or less, they were moving movement, but not very large movement. After shaking it so much, they didn't move, they must have mostly been dead. Based on calculations, almost eighty percent should be dead. Eighty percent? A margin debt and balance. The total was one point fifteen million shares. Eighty percent of that was ninety two thousand nine hundred and twenty thousand shares. In other words, in the price goes up and sellers came forth, two hundred thousand shares were valued at one hundred and sixty billion more. Leftover funds would still be over five hundred million. It should be doable. How? The price. As Agala said, it looked at a share price. It continues to rise 15, 16, 17. So it's fairly big at showing up. The sellers issued a challenge, but buyers showed up and the price had headed towards 824. The time is now 4 o'clock. There's one hour left. The ones with little by way of funds who are thinking of clawing their way to the top ranks, somehow grabbing onto a sudden huge rallies and sell offs, it must have felt like we only had an hour left to do things. The remaining fish flocked to the stocks with even a bit of trade volume. Black chocolate, black chocolate core. A fair amount of fire too. After a forest race to 8 to 824, in one instant it dropped down to 813. Another returned to 824 once more. She looked up and spoke. Someone else's bone must appear. Perhaps so. The response is too quick where it calls out the price is too, isn't too uniform. Like a pinball, a price fluctuated along the same width. Suddenly the price fluctuation started to move. It's clear if Bowman and Garners are trading according to the prices that derived from the statistical price fluctuations. There is a limit to how fast a human hand can move, so that a computer handle things will take profits of less than 1% and repeat hundreds of times, allowing profits to pile up. But in the end, it only worked because there were four humans who went along the machine's patterns trading. Now, as last trader of the contest, the ones who would play and those who were filtering in, they were the ones who fought things out. The price dropped up to 832. The program responded and pursued faithfully. The sellers got growing in free, but had to explosion with trade volume. The time was now approaching 4.30. I expected the garland was looking straight at me. How? I looked at her slowly. I then nodded. Don't get scared. I shrugged my shoulders and then laughed. If you do, then it's over. Again, I waited. I waited fervently. The last 30 minutes, from the viewpoint of these immersed in the marketplace, was when time seemed to go by in a flash. For the most part, people at the limits making orders in desperation. That price fluctuation was sending them equally through heaven and hell. It would be bad if one were to give in to that torrent of emotion. You have to see through people's, through to people's intents. From mafia and war films and reckless action, well, which is executed only in the last 10 minutes. The ones who died off easily were ones who put their lives on the line in the last 30 minutes. 20 minutes? The garden mumbled worriedly. The price was 824. It wasn't exactly a whale, but the seller order for 200,000 shares appeared. I put a buy order for 300,000. There was a whale. It seemed like I could hear a voice in my mind from everyone who was participating. Birds were sort of about to a whale gathered, just like bird sharks when blood in the water gathered. The sellers put out seller orders and screamed frenzy, but the buyers kept buying mercilessly. Many people who understood the whale appeared by the buy side. The margin of debt balance was not sell orders waiting the wings. They were dead. A dead paper tiger who said nothing. The price cost 840. Then we take 50. My average stock price was 820, which went up to a grand total of 490 million moles. If the price went up by less than 4%, that would be 16 million. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough at all. The remaining 400 million moles had to make up a bit less than 100 million moles in unrealised gains. Timing. It was timing. I had to become the demon. I must laugh loudly and run past people who could only stare at their screen and dumbfound it, and yell out in a half-crazed frenzy, unable to make an order in time. 
place to focus skills here. Here it was. Over time slipped by, one minute after another. 13 minutes remained, 12 minutes, 11, 10. I didn't put it out on order, it wasn't time yet. Sellers sold frantically while buyers fought, fought frantically. The margin trading balance changed in a bustling manner. Margin selling was piling up as was margin buying. Margin buying wouldn't collapse. This could work. At the moment I was about to make the final buy order. How? A guy of shout stopped my hand. A finger pointed at a margin debt balance. Those numbers decreased suddenly. Is it selling? I think it's people have bought earlier and selling off now. In that case, we had to wait just a bit longer. In order to get the greatest effect, it had to be after selling had stopped. However, a sense of foreboding crept up on my spine. Four things to cough, the total margin debt balance was 1.05. And things to cough, the part that piled on afterwards was at most 300,000. Despite that, the number had already dropped to 3,700. There's a calculation over in the estimate. She said it as if reading what I was thinking. How much? The square root of that figure, in other words, 100,000 shares. The error range. It was true at any moment it stopped a bit less than 700,000 shares. Did all those margin buyers decide to sell? Were we anticipating a price drop? Seven minutes left. I decided now. I had to decide now if I was going to put out an order. The price was 836. The number of orders was too great. There was a possibility the orders wouldn't be agreed upon. That is, the outstanding orders wouldn't be processed and funds would get returned. That was bad. Frankly speaking, it was bad. There was nothing more disgraceful than losing while holding funds. The same was those who were so foolish as to be overly cautious, so they ended up dead in the water. I prepared an order with 400,000 shares. What would happen if there was a large number of margin buyers still alive in the game? If that were the case, we had to hold on until the last minute, or we'd get hit by the opposing orders. The chance of that was 50-50. No, that's not right. I looked at Hagana. She looked at me quietly. Whether or not I would be able to acquire 200,000 moles wasn't a critical point. Could I trust Hagana's data or not? That was the question. Hagana pressed her lips together tightly and looked at me. Her face was full of anxiety. This trading should have been for Hagana's sake. I loosened up and spoke. Well then, let's go. I turned to face the screen, then put out the order. Starting at 836, cut down sell orders like a raging wave. Buying so soon followed. But since my order was precedence, the speed was not enough. Before long, I pulled out my buy orders and my price shot up into the sky. 850, 860, 868, 74, 79, 82. The force and wild attack stopped there. But there, the buy orders couldn't catch up after the second wave. Push the price over. It took my breath away as the price flew up to 895 in one go. The average stock price was 861. In excess of 900,000 shares, 10% profit from 720 was 17 million. There's 20 more to go. A buying flooded with 3 minutes remaining. 897, 98, 99. The hundreds barrier. At that moment, when it was surpassed, a new door was being opened to the world. It was at that moment I read it myself about brilliance. Huh? As the buy order numbers inflated. Things stopped. The situation before me was difficult to comprehend. Sell orders. What stopped the wave of buy orders was this. 620,000 shares in total. Could it be lagging the system? Things moved at a horrifically slow and ominous pace, as if a massive meteorite had slammed into a star. Could it be lagging the system? Someone has... I my orders immediately looked over the margin debt balance, but it didn't move. A new challenger? If that were the case, I could just get rid of it all and claim victory. I put out an order remaining 100,000 shares I had. Trade volume opposed it. And then, in the remaining two minutes, the system moved. Buyers went out. This was going to work. Right when I thought that, the minute on the screen, the margin debt balance decreased dramatically. My breathing stopped. What was displayed was that within the early trading, there were margin buyers within the ranks. Remember, those total numbers exceed the statistical ever the Garner had mentioned. That was the conclusion I came to. Sell. 
We weren't the ones who could take it anymore. It was a margin by us. While I was mumbling at what was wiped out by the war with demons in the last two minutes. The price reached 912. And finally, the buyers who were waiting to sell off the shares went and sold it off with all full force. 8, 5, 1, 91, 82. They accelerated vigorously. Down to one minute. No one could stop a small amount of buyers going in. The game was over. The countdown on the screen stopped. It showed it was 5 o'clock. The price was 8.62. The average stock price was strange enough. 8.62 moles. In other words, all of our trading was meaningless and our funds didn't increase by one mole. The conclusion... Defeated. I mumbled quietly. The result was 260 million moles, second place. My prize money was 50,000 moles. At that moment, a popping sound reverberated, indicating that mail had arrived on computer. Perhaps it was a head-hunting solicitation, but why now? I ignored it and stretched my arms. Next to me, Hagan looked unfounded. It couldn't be helped. Hagan's forecast was off. Ah. Uh, she mumbled something, but only tears came out. While looking at the numbers on the screen on a stationary computer, she cried expressionlessly. But I had nothing I could say. Instead, I placed my hand on Hagana's head and patted it roughly. When she'd been frightened sobbing in a room, she was covering up her head frantically. I also patted her on the head. Hagana did not move to cover up her head. She just continued to cry without a single word. I gave her head one final light pat and stood up from a chair. I wanted a drink, and I was tired. I also had to contact Barton. Giving a big stretch, I popped my joints. I could say that I didn't feel so upset about losing because it was all in an imaginary world. But probably more than anything else, it was from a sense of achievement of having come so far in lockstep with Hagana. I made sure to remember this by doing something like that it could fulfil one's heart. It wasn't a bad experience. Not a bad one at all. Even as a ding-dong chime indicated the revival of new mail, I decided it was a time to use the toilet. At that time, at that precise moment, a phone on the wall started to ring. We'll find out who's phoning next episode. Bye-bye.